Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Gorfiend on Mythic. Yes, and this fight is not only absolutely fucking awesome, it is definitely the hardest boss in the instance up to this point. Um, it doesn't really have a high DPS or healing requirement, it's more that you just need really good raid communication and coordination. And the main reason for this is because of how the stomach works on Mythic. Now for this fight, you want to bring two tanks, we'd recommend four healing it, but if you are struggling, you can definitely five heal it, it's safer to do so. Um, and you can bring more or less any DPS comp. So on this fight, when you die or when you get the Shadow of Death debuff, you're taken into the stomach, just like you are on normal and heroic mode. Inside the stomach is the exact same. You want your DPS to kill the constructs, you want your healers to top the essences, and you want your tanks to pick up and kill off the enraged spirits. And you still only have 40 seconds inside because of the instant kill uh, digest mechanic. Now the difference of Mythic is you cannot leave the stomach area. If you walk into the middle, like you did on heroic and normal, you will not be teleported out. Now, when you're ported into the stomach on Mythic, you'll actually spawn a shadow copy of yourself on the outside. Now, this mob just stands completely still and starts a 40 second channel. This channel is an indication of how long that particular player has left inside the stomach. So once the cast is finished, that player dies. Now, if you kill the shadow copy, that player is actually released from the stomach and fired back into the main room. So the idea is, is that whenever anyone goes inside, you kill their shadow copy before the cast finishes so they don't die. You, however, do need to find the perfect balance with your damage so that people aren't released too early. Otherwise, you'll just be overrun with ads and you'll definitely wipe. Now, the debuff that you get from going inside, which is called Gorfiend's Corruption, that's the debuff that prevents you from going back inside again, is permanent in duration and is only removed by soaking spirits during his Feast of Souls phase. Before we expand on exactly how that works, you do actually want to use this debuff to your advantage. Now, when you have this debuff, you will not be targeted by Shadow of Death as it is always applied to players that do not have the debuff, unless, of course, your entire raid has it. So what we do on the pool is that we have our DPS warrior taunt the boss take lethal damage, immediately die, and this of course will drag him inside the stomach, and we instantly kill his shadow copy on the outside. As soon as he's out, of course he'll have the Gorfiend's Corruption debuff, which means he'll never be targeted again to go back inside. We have him in charge of killing all of the shadow copies for the entire fight, right from the very, very start. And of course, having it so he will never go back inside again means that it will always be available to kill off those shadow copies. Now we have a single location that people stack on when they're about to go inside, and he just simply cleaves these copies down. He does have some assistance from our DK's Necrotic Plague and Boomkin's Starfall, but ultimately, he's the one that will be executing them off at the right time. We make sure that we free people with around 5-7 to seven seconds left. This makes sure that you completely rule out any unlucky RNG with damage preventing him from killing them off in time. Now if he is falling behind on damage or requires some assistance on them for whatever reason, such as maybe him having a touch of doom or something like that, he does call for it in advance and the ranged DPS or anyone else will swap to them to make sure they die off in time. Now people that you do not have assigned to kill these copies, need to be incredibly careful not to cleave onto them. The boss's hitbox is absolutely gigantic, so it's actually easily done, but if accidental damage does go on these copies, and people are being freed early as a result, you will wipe and you will be overrun with adds. We actually have our mages take off their Doom Nova trinkets, we have our hunters completely banned from using Chimera shot on the boss, and we have our melee and tanks stand away from the copies. Just do anything to avoid cleaving onto them. While you're progressing, it's a really great idea to keep checking all your outgoing damage on on top of these mobs just to see and determine what damage you do want on them and what damage you don't. You need to make sure they take consistent and predictable damage just so everyone is freed at the correct time. Just to assist you so you know when you need to free people so you can see the exact timers really easily without having to look at the cast bars, we actually have a weak aura that displays the duration of everyone's debuffs inside and you might find that useful. You can find a link for this in the description of the video. Now occasionally some players will have Touch of Doom and Shadow of Death on them at the exact same time. In this situation you must run away from the raid to place your Doom in a decent place because you don't want Doom right in the middle of the room because that'll just make everyone take a shit ton of damage. However you won't have enough time to move out, drop your Doom and then get back to the raid or wherever the area is you're supposed to be spawning your copies. Now in this situation you just want to move out, drop your Doom and then be ported inside. All you need to do is just call out where your copy is and then have some ranged DPS swap to you. Again, making sure that you're not released too early or too late. Just make sure everyone, if you have that weaker, it's really, really easy. If everyone knows exactly when you need to die, just a couple of hunters can switch to you, Chimera shot you and you're dead. So it's absolutely fine. Just make sure you know what's going on. Now, when a tank is ported in, which should only be twice per phase, you'll want to send an extra DPS in. And this is incredibly important. 
It's very likely that of course you'll already have DPS inside, however they'll be dealing with the constructs. If they swap to the spirits, they're simply going to fall behind. So the moment that your tank is sent in, have one player that is not affected by Gorfin's corruption, so someone who hasn't been dragged in or died yet, kill themselves so they'll also be sent in. Now the best way to kill yourself is to simply taunt the boss, or if you can't do that because of your class or whatever reason, make sure you stand in front of the current copies in the water where Gorfiend is sat in. This water actually deals quite hard ticking damage. The moment you're inside, make sure you damage down the spirit so he charges into the main room. And once he's gone, make sure you immediately free your tank because he needs to come back out so you can start taunt swapping. Whatever DPS went inside to assist the tank can also be freed if you wish, but you might as well keep them in there for as long as possible just to help kill constructs. Now the ads from the stomach when released into the main room are the exact same as heroic. Tanks make sure you taunt when your stack drops and just make sure that all of your DPS is killing everything before hitting the boss because the damage on the boss in this phase is entirely unnecessary because you're going to have the Feast of Souls phase when you're doing 200% extra damage and all your cooldowns up anyway, so you might as well just always be on the ads. If you get too many ads and no one switching to them, you're going to wipe very, very quickly. Now, you may notice all the markers that we got set up around the boss, and these markers are simply just a guideline of where people should be stood. It is a good idea to have your raid as close to the boss as possible. The damage from Mark of Doom on Mythic is very high and as a result you are forced to place it as far away as possible to stop people from dying. If you have everyone stood in this semicircle area in front of the boss, the Doom AoE damage will just tickle you if they're placed right up against the walls. Now being this close does however make it slightly more awkward to spread 6 shards for the Surging Shadows but it is still possible and it is still very important that you do. Generally as you just pull this boss more and more times you kind of get your own little position anyway and if everyone sticks roughly to their same area you should always have a good amount of space. Standing in these positions also makes it so 4 healing is way more manageable, therefore you have more DPS so the ad should die much quicker. Now by the time your Feast of Soul phase comes around, it is likely that close to your entire raid is affected by the Gorfiend's Corruption debuff. This is the time where you need to remove it. We have everyone apart from the warrior who's dealing with the shadow copies, move out of the raid and soak a spirit to remove the debuff. Note that only one person can remove the debuff per spirit though. So this means you'll need to set up six groups with three players in each. Just use a different group of uh, players each wave of spirits to go out and just remove their debuff. When soaking these spirits, try to stagger them the best you can. If you soak an entire wave of three in a single go, you're looking at your entire raid dropping very, very dangerously. So never do that. Always stagger it. You also want to assign your healing cooldowns for every single time a wave of spirits is soaked. As an example, we use Aura Mastery on 1, Healing Tide on 2, Link on 3, Barry on 4, and then we use Personals for the 5th and 6th, and we use a Revival when it is needed over the course of that time. DPS, make sure you save your 3 minutes, save your Ring, your Pot, your Bloodlust for these Feast of Soul phases. This is the only time where you're going to do some good damage to the boss. Once you've got past that Feast of Soul phase and you've managed to get the debuff of everyone apart from your warrior, go back to the boss and the fight just continues from that point. And that is literally it. So the entire fight is just managing those shadow copies, making sure no one is released too early or too late because of course they're going to die. Make sure you send an extra DPS when your tank goes in just so you don't fall behind on any constructs. And try your best to put Dooms as far away from the raid as possible, just so no one takes any excess damage. And that's more or less the fight. I mean, you, you'll probably look at having three Feast of Soul phases on your first kill. But as your gear gets better, or maybe even on a first kill, if you already have really sick gear, maybe got lucky from Mythic Boxes, you may have two. Yeah, exactly. And of course, on your last Feast of Souls phase, when you know you're not going to be doing the fight again anymore, say the boss is like sub 30% or something like that, you can just have your tank soak all the spirits for that phase because, of course, you don't need to remove your debuff. That means you can have higher DPS out on the boss, which is nice. But overall, as long as you can get through one set of Feast of Souls phase and everyone stayed alive and everything's fine, that's it. You've actually killed the boss. Just do it a couple more times and he'll be gone and it's all good. But thank you very much for watching, guys. If this guy did help you out, then make sure you do give us a like. It helps us out a lot. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.